Today, I continue with the Peacock's Lock Viaduct Scratch Build. This is a fun project. I hope you'll stay tuned. Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. This will be part two of the Peacock's Lock Viaduct Scratch Build. In part one, I designed the bridge, made the mold so I could cast all the spandrels, poured the spandrels, and began carving them. I ended up part one having finished one spandrel. If you haven't seen that part, I encourage you to head on over to the playlist and watch the series in its entirety. Now let's get started with part two. I finished carving all the spandrels and I'm real happy to report that I did not ham-handedly drop any of them. The first spandrel had some tiny air bubbles along the surface. These were not an issue as I was able to carve them completely out. The rest of the spandrels that I poured had no air bubbles except these two. And as you can see, they're pretty obvious. I thought about scrapping them and just pouring a couple new spandrels. Then I decided it would be a good chance to show how I'd fix something like this. There's a number of materials that I could use to fix this. I could have just mixed up a little bit of plaster, maybe some joint compound or spackle. Even the lightweight uh, fill-in spackle would probably have worked. But I was a little concerned with the position and the size of, of these holes. So I decided to use a product called Milliput. This isn't something that I see used in model railroading much anymore but it is used in other modeling. It's a two-part putty. You mix it up like, a, like an epoxy. And once it's set up, you can sand it, file it, carve it, drill it, tap it, really anything you want to do. Considering where these air bubbles are, I don't trust the milliput to stay in place by itself. So I'm gonna use a very small amount of thick CA just to hold the milliput where I want it. I can just scrape away any excess and let it set up. Here I'm just filing, carving, and sanding to blend the mill putt into the surrounding stones. technique I like to use, especially for scratch builds, but you can use it for scenery or weathering or even kit builds, anything really that you want to make sure you get just right. And that's simply to take a picture. The camera shows all the scenes. And especially with today's digital photography, I can enlarge the picture and get a very close-up view. 
and of course see all the flaws. I'm not trying to be a rivet counter, that's not me. I would just rather find the flaws now, and if I deem them too small or otherwise unimportant, I can ignore them. But this way I'll be able to fix the glaring ones before it's too late. Now that I'm happy with all the spandrels, I'm just going to square up the edges where the two spandrels will join, just so that I have a nice clean joint. concrete capstones for each spandrel. So that gives me 30 capstones. But there's almost no carving to do here, so this will go very quick. And as you can see here, each of the capstones has a drain pipe. I cut the template from half inch MDF, just a little bit longer than I needed for three capstones. Then I cut and sanded the front profile then I cut the template into three equal lengths. I made a notch in the template to accept the drain pipe because this will be much easier than trying to center them in 30 cap stains. Then I gave the MDF a quick coating of spray shellac and made the mold to cast three of the cap stones at once. And here are the cap stones. I don't like the extensive weathering on the original. This picture was taken in 1992. I'm modeling some 25 years earlier, so I'm going to assume less weathering, mostly just rounded corners, but I do want to show this relief line. I want a nice crisp relief line here. So to minimize any chip out, I dampen the, the face of the capstone slightly. Through a little trial and error, I found that a piece of photo paper gave me the perfect offset to position the line just where I wanted it. It also makes it very easy to glide the knife along the surface. I'm using a sharp hobby knife, which I'm holding in place with a little blue tack, and applying very little pressure. The combination of the damp surface, the light pressure, and a nice smooth stroke gives a nice crisp relief line. This didn't take long at all. Here's all 30 capstones finished. I debated several approaches to creating the archways and piercings. The piercings are rather small and won't be very noticeable, but the archways are exposed and really very obvious. I decided to try a technique I saw on Kathy Millich's channel and that is using craft foam sheets and carving, or more accurately scoring, the mortar joints into the face. This is just an experiment. I'll wait and see how it is to paint these before I decide whether I'm keeping them or not. I'd have liked to have a lighter color foam, but black was all I could find without ordering it. So we'll see how it goes. I used Photoshop to create this guide for carving the horizontal mortar joints. I put large dots at the end of alternating lines because at this size it's much too easy to misalign. The dots make it easy to ensure that I'm lined up on the same line on both sides of the craft foam. For the horizontal mortar joints, I'm using a carving tool with a relatively sharp blade and just applying a small amount of pressure. I don't want to cut all the way through the foam.
the vertical mortar joints, I started with a number 11 blade in my hobby knife, but I switched to a very small chisel blade. I can just push the blade into the foam to score the line. Piercings are done the same way, only with much smaller stones. At this size, the alternating dots are an absolute necessity. one archway and one piercing finished. I just have four more of these to go. This goes much quicker than carving the spandrels. The black foam does make it a bit more tedious. I kind of wish I had ordered a lighter color. So I'm going to end this part here and I'll go away and finish the carving the archways and piercings. So that's it for part two of the Peacock's Lock Viaduct project. I hope you'll join me for part three when I start adding some coloring to all of the stonework. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and share. And as always, I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks so much for joining me today. Till next time.